Little boxes are stuff, so you can wave at the people who are <laughs> streaming. How y'all doing? You. Thank you very much. Okay, I apologize. I didn't know y'all couldn't hear. I thought this is really unusual, considering it's Victory Monday and everything. <laughs> there we go. Uh, okay, I want to um, I want to go back to yesterday for a minute, uh, maybe more than a minute. Um, how hard is it to play in a game when where you're that dominant? You've had a few yeah. this year. It's not hard. Um, this is probably my first year being on a team where, you know, we've been blowing out teams um, like we have on the, on the big wins we have. But each game is different. you got to go in it with the mindset. It's going to be a 60-minute ball game. And, um, and just go out and just play hard and, because you never know, it's any given Sunday. You gotta, you gotta give your, put your best foot forward and, and be ready for whatever type of game you're gonna get. How really? much more? Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Go ahead. How much more focused do you have to be in playing in those games? Because it can be kind of challenging to not let those type of games slip away. Yeah, you gotta focus. <laughs> like, Cause, I mean, I just have that mindset. Like it starts over every week. Mm -hmm. um, no matter who you playing, they in the league for a reason. You got to go out and, and bring your A game each week, and I think you have to take that mindset um, if you want to get to where you want to go. So uh, where – I hope I'm not um, overstating, but I think where Stephon Gilmore wants to go eventually is Canton, Ohio. For I'm, sure. I'm not wrong about that, am no, I? No, you're not wrong. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about the career that you have built that allows you to think uh, that dream. All-American in college. Uh, drafted by Buffalo, and when you were drafted by Buffalo, did you think you were, that's it, I'm in Buffalo forever and I'll have a great <laughs> career in Buffalo? I was just young. I was 21 years old, just never been to Buffalo, New York. Uh, just wanted to be great. You know, that's, that was my mindset. I wanted to be great. I wanted to prove people, prove to people I can be, you know, one of the best corners to play the game. But, and you were there for four years, right? Five? Five, five, five years. Yeah. Uh, and then – uh, they didn't sign you after the fifth year. Yeah, they hired a new coach and uh, signed a five-year deal in New England. Uh, that turned out to be a good move for you. Yeah, it was great. Um, just going somewhere where they was winning already. Um, had opportunity to, you know, play on a, a lot of national games, big games. And I think that's when my career took off because I think I was making plays in Buffalo. It was just – uh, we was losing a lot, and uh, and it's hard it's hard to be noticed sometimes. So um, I think that was a big move for my career. Well, when you win two Super Bowls, you'll get noticed a little bit, right? For sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you, most players play. That's the reason most players play. Yeah. When you've won one, and then when you've won another one, how do you maintain the hunger? I just love the game. I love playing the game. Uh, I've been playing since I was six, seven years old. And the thing that keeps me going is, is um, say if I don't do well, um, just learning, uh, learning from it and doing well the next time, um, resetting each play. It's different challenges each week. So um, I just love it. My son in it, into the game now, you know, he gives me extra motivation now and, he walk around with his gloves on, his sleeves on. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's, it's still fun for me, and I'm just going to keep playing and, until I can't no more. Well, one of the reasons that I mentioned the Hall of Fame, one of the first conversations I had with Stefan when he uh, signed here was I, I remember the 2019 season when he was the defensive player of the year in the NFL, and cornerbacks don't win that yeah. award. And, uh, and I'll remember the game the Cowboys lost to New England in New England that year. And everyone said he was having a great year. And uh, the Cowboys went up there and I said, wow, he really is that good. I mean, it's, <laughs> you have to see him in person almost to really appreciate it. Yeah. And, and um, that is an unusual accomplishment for a cornerback. Mm -hmm. how, how do you think you achieved that? And what did you get from that? I think that year, you know, we had a, a great team. Uh, we had a great defense. Um, but I think that year I was covering whoever's their op opposing team's best receiver, whether they was in the slot, outside. I was covering them man-to-man. -man, and I was making plays on the ball. I think I had like seven picks. Um, 
and I was shutting guys out. So I think that's that's what opened people's eyes. And um, I did it literally playing man. I wasn't playing zone. So wherever he went, that's where I went. Defensive player of the year, you've won Super Bowls, five-time Pro Bowler. I mean, how do you remain so humble with all the accolades that you've made? I kind of learned um, when, I, when I was in New England. You know, I kind of try to take that mindset where, you know, no matter what you did last year or the year before, you got to prove yourself every year. And, you know, it, it kind of stuck with me um, ever since I've been there. And, and I just just try to just live in the moment and, and be great in the moment. How, how much did that head coach have to do with that? It, see, he I don't know him, but he seems like the kind of guy who would encourage you to be yeah. to be humble. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, honestly, he uh, he taught me a lot about the game, um, discipline, um, just just being a, a great teammate and and being a hard worker. And and he didn't really tell you how great you were. Um, it was kind of expected there. Um, but, you know, he, like I say, he taught me about the game. I wouldn't be the player I am today without him, for sure. So, uh, this, this, these NFL travelogues just fascinate me. So, you're one of the top players in the league, and then the next thing you know, in fact, funny, the Cowboys are going to Carolina this week because a couple of years ago you were there. Yeah. And then you were in Indianapolis, and the Cowboys traded with uh, the Colts to bring you here, and I'll bet – that 90% of the people who identified themselves as NFL fans would not be able to say that you played for the Panthers or the Colts. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was – um, so when I left New England, it was tough. Uh, I tore my quad my fifth year and came back on PUP. Um, I wasn't fully healthy then, and I think that was a tough part of my career. But, you know, I kept working. Um, Indy gave me a shot. Um was able to go up there and prove myself again and uh, um, talk to Indy at the end of the season. Um, and it was best best for both of us to, you know, I wanted to come here, you know, because I know what type of team they had last year. I know where they was trying to go. And I wanted to bring someone like myself to, to help the team. Did you know Dan Quinn? I knew Dan Quinn. Um, I knew when he coached in Super Bowls. Uh, he had, always had great defense. So um, I wanted to suit up with these guys, all the great players on the team. So um, who wouldn't want to come to the Dallas? So. You knew him personally or you knew yeah. of him? You can applaud that. <laughs> yeah, he just, <laughs> Sorry. He just gave you a cookie. Go ahead and enjoy it for crying out loud. <laughs> Sorry, oh, no, I was, no, I was asking, uh, you knew him personally or you knew just knew of him? I didn't know him personally. I knew of him. Okay. Um, but Gus Bradley uh, was my defensive coordinator in Indy and mm -hmm. he talked highly of him. And, um, you know, I was excited, you know, to play along with Trey, um, Micah, um, the defense we have, Deron now, playing happy on the team with him. Um, all the players on our team, you know, CD. Dak, you know, TP, all these great players. So I was just wanted to bring myself in and, and, and help this team win. When you got the call saying that you were coming to the Dallas Cowboys franchise, what was your first initial reaction? Now I was so excited. Everybody hit me up because, like, where I'm from, it's all Cowboy fans. Um, <laughs> you know, they, they love their Cowboys and, you know, <laughs> for sure. And, um, I was excited, you know, my uncle a fan, just to just to put the star on, just to be a part of a great franchise and, and play with some great players. It, and a lot of my a lot of players that I looked up to played for this organization. Like so, I mean I was in prime time, you know, Michael Irvin, Emmett. Um it's a lot of great players that play here, so Troy Aikman. Uh yeah. it's inevitable in an NFL season that a team changes as the season goes on. Mm -hmm. And so when you got here and everybody came, went to training camp, came home from training camp, there was so much excitement about you wanted to be an elite defense. Now you've lost two players yeah. off of that for the year in Trayvon Diggs and, and Leighton Vander Esch. And so the defense has had to morph. Mm -hmm. How have you done that? In what ways? I think a lot of our guys stepped up. Uh, Bell has stepped up uh, and been playing great. 
Um, Deron has stepped up and been, and, and been playing great. So uh, it sucks to, to lose those guys because I felt like, especially with Trey and Van Der Esch, but I was really, you know, growing close with Trey and um, trying to teach him everything I knew. And I think he was going to have a great year, but to see him go down was tough for me. And Van Der Esch, you know, he's our leader. He's, he's, he's a control in the middle, and that was tough too. But I think a lot of guys stepped up, and um, that's what you have to do in this league. The younger guys stepped up, but they had vets like you, Malik, yeah. Dono, to help them, um, yeah. you know, really grow. How have you seen those guys just develop? I mean, you mean the young guys? Yeah, the young guys. Oh, yeah. Um, they've been great, you know. One thing I, I think that's, that's not surprising, but I, I really admire is they, they even kill. You know, they, they don't get too high, too low. You know, they they embrace every challenge and, and they're ready for each moment. Well, we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about how Stefan's role has changed. Uh, where the de- we're only halfway through the season, <laughs> yeah. So uh, there's a lot to go yet, and Stefan Gilmore is going to help us understand what uh, is coming up in that regard. We're delighted to have everybody with us, and delighted that everybody at Sidecar Social can hear us now that we fixed that glitch. Um, and uh, we we do want to remind you next week with thanksgiving week we will not have a show on monday night it's just way too compacted a week for the players but we will have a show a week from monday even though there's another thursday night game because then they'll be on a seven day schedule but all you really need to know is we won't have a show here next week uh, and there is one other thing you need to know, and that is that. Yes, this, seg- <laughs> this show is brought to you by Albertsons. What a segue. When it huh? <laughs> comes time to shop for tailgate favorites, go to Albertsons and Tom Thumb to get 10% off your groceries every Dallas Cowboys game day. When you wear your Cowboys jersey, Albertsons and Tom Thumb, the official supermarket and pharmacy of the Dallas Cowboys. Stefan Gilmore is our special guest. We'll be right back on the Cowboys app.
the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertson. And welcome back. We are at Sidecar Social in the Star District in Frisco on Victory Monday. There we go. It's amazing what That's happens better. when the audience can hear. Admit it. It's <laughs> absolutely shocking. Uh, we're delighted to have everybody with us, especially happy to have Stefan Gilmore, the Cowboys' outstanding cornerback, our guest this evening. And later in the show, as we usually do, we'll give you an opportunity to ask questions of uh, Stefan. How, how would you com- – if you were a scout, how would you compare the 2023 – Stefan Gilmore to the 2019 Player of the Year. <laughs> Way smarter. Um, I think um, it's nothing I haven't seen. I've been playing for 12 years, but, you know, that wasn't that long ago. But I'm smarter. Um, different scheme. So, you know, kind of got to play a different way sometimes. But, you know, I'm not that far off. Um, but – you know, I mean, I'm just having fun playing, you know, it's around different guys, uh, just enjoying it. You don't sound like anybody who's ready to quit playing football anymore. <laughs> nah, so. nah, nah, I still love it. I mean, even though it's year 12, I still, I'm still moving around pretty good. So I'm enjoying it. Did you have a, a sense, as, as you looked at the roster, you knew how young the other cornerbacks were here. Mm-hmm. So it's probably not a surprise to you, but did you have a sense of the extent to which you would be viewed as a mentor and have an opportunity to help guys like not just Ron Bland, but even Trayvon uh, kind of yeah. understand how to play the pro game? Yeah, for sure. I mean, when I first came in, you know, DQ was, you know, he, he was like, can you get Trey to, you know, follow you and, and uh, do your warm-up? Because I, I got a whole process before practice, before games. You know, and just trying to teach, you know, like DB the same thing, um, just how to be a pro, you know, how to how to how to study the game, you know, because it's different. I mean, not saying we have great coaches, but it's different when they're coming from someone that's yeah. that's in your shoes, that's been there, that's that's see what you see. So um, it's fun doing it because I see those guys like I see myself when I was younger. So. Anything I can do to help to help them be a great player, I do that. Can what? you share what that process is? Yep. Your pregame process? <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> we got plenty of time um, <laughs> and a hungry audience. I think um, <laughs> just like my pregame prep before practice, you know, my um, exercises I do, warm up, stretch, um, hot tub, and uh, little exercises I do, my band work, just to just to get ready for practice to make sure I'm warm, make sure I'm flexible and things like that. To this, this, cause it's a, this, to play this game 12 years, you gotta be doing something right. You gotta take care of your body. You gotta, you gotta do the little things to, to help you be a great player. Have you kept the same pre practice ritual since you started? It changed yeah. when you were younger. <laughs> when I was younger, you know, you just kind of learn and um, that's why, you know, then I'm older, I try to get, like, younger guys to, to actually do the little things it, it takes to, to so they can play a long time in this league and, and be a great player. You talk about how you've gotten smarter over the years. What's some piece of advice that you've given some of the younger guys? I think um, one thing I tell them is, um, you know, enjoy every moment um, because, you know, you never know when it's going to be your last, and I just think, it's never gonna be easy, you know. You gotta, you gotta. It's not all peaches and cream. You gotta work hard every day. You gotta prove yourself every week, um, you know. And if you don't do good, you gotta, you gotta have that same confidence going into the next week. And I just try to, you know, preach that to the guys and just keep believing in themselves, no matter what. Cause you go hit adversity, it's gonna be how you respond. Did the approach that other teams came at? you guys with change when Trey went out, I would think that they would probably say, well, we don't really want to test Gilmore, but I know I don't want to throw over there. And then when Trey is not there, then yeah. maybe they would try to take a shot at the young guy. And Did yeah. ch- teams change? I think, um, yeah. I mean, I think, obviously, being an older player, I think teams would try younger younger guys a lot instead of an older guy that's experienced, that's, that's been playing the game. And, 
you know, Duran has been capitalizing on on the, on his opportunities, and I think, you know, it's exciting to see because I see how hard he worked. You know, even in the meeting room, watching film, um, the way he the way he practices, it's, it's just fun to see. Can we talk about him for a minute? Because especially through your eyes, I mean, you're an expert on the position, and you know, it, he's a fifth round draft choice from Fresno, and nobody outside of the scouts paid much attention to him being here. Nobody thought he was going to be what he is now. Yeah. So I think the first question I would have for you is, what is he now, and what's his ceiling? I think because um, I, I didn't know. I knew him, but I didn't know his story. Uh, I know he – I think he went Division two, and then he transferred to um, D1 school, and then, you know, he went fifth round. So he was always working his way up. And I think he's always a great player. He just had to prove himself, you know, um, every year. And I think since he – yeah, I think he had like six picks last year, but I think he's growing. One thing about him that stick out to me, he act like he in year five, but he only in year <laughs> two. You know, he's very mature. Um, he's even kill. He's kind of laid back, quiet. And um, he watched a lot of film. That's, he studied his game. He want to be great. He enjoy it, and he just got a knack for the ball. That's one thing that's that you can't take away from. I mean, he had six picks last year and five this year. That's that's a he keep that he keep that going. You know, he gonna be in the fifties probably. <laughs> what, what's uh, what's it, what's his ceiling? I think he he can be as good as he want to be. You know, he he's just got to stay hungry. You know, that's the thing. Um, he got to stay hungry, and I think he will. Just off his his personality, just the way he carries himself, I think he always stay hungry. But I think he can be one of the top corners in the league, if not the best. You know, if he if he keep working. Oh wow! How is it, I guess, for Al Harris, a guy that's developed guys like Duran, you now that you know you're here for the Dallas Cowboys. What's it like learning from a guy like Al Harris? I mean, Al is great. I'm, I. Growing up as a kid, I used to watch Al. I was going to say, did you yeah. remember watching him play? <laughs> yeah, I used yeah. to watch Al Harris, Charles Woodson, mm -hmm. you know, those guys. And one thing about Al that stuck, he was a press corner. You know, he liked to get physical with guys. And even my dad, my uncle used to send me – we used to watch, like, him on YouTube training <laughs> and stuff like that. So, uh, he played the game. He uh, – he's – He's helped me out a lot, even in year 12. He he teaching guys the right way to play the game, you know, and the right way to actually cover. But without without the scheme in it, he's teaching you how to really cover guys, really how to really how to break down guys, and um, he's teaching them the right way. And I'm 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 so happy that people like Deron Bland and Trayvon and guys like that really get to learn from someone like him. I want to talk a little bit about your style. Um, <coughs> I think when you were winning player of the year, you were a complete corner. You're not the biggest corner, but you were, you were a complete player. Yeah. When the Cowboys traded for you, I, I went and looked up some clips. Let's, you know, guy's had a leg injury, and he's a little older. Let's see what he's got. The thing that really uh, caught my attention, and this was of you last year, uh -huh. is how physical you were. Yeah. You, you know, all right, maybe he's not going to have uh, seven picks or ten picks. But, man, he sticks his nose in everywhere. Yeah. Uh, wh where did you learn that, and is it hard to maintain that play style? It's not hard. Uh, I just try to play the game the right way. I respect the game a lot, and I try to play it the right way. And um, I'm a, I think I'm a big, bigger corner. I try to play physical, try to use my length, and uh, whether that's tackling, my making plays on the ball. I try to do as much as I can to maximize my potential. Well, you're doing it. Yeah. I'd say you've done it, and, you, and you're still doing it. Yeah. And we're going to talk – when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about what uh, Stefan sees as the second half playing out, the second half of the season for the Cowboys. Just delighted to have Stefan Gilmore on this football team and with us tonight at Sidecar Social on the Cowboys Hour. And uh, who, who's bringing us the Cowboys Hour, Nicole? Lou Casey, the official bootmaker of the Dallas Cowboys. We'll be right back. <laughs>
to the Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertson. From Sidecar Social in the Star District in Frisco, welcome back. It's Victory Monday on the Cowboys Hour. There we go. <laughs> Delighted to have Cowboys cornerback Stefan Gilmore with us uh, this evening. And uh, again, no show next Monday because it's Thanksgiving week and nobody's got time to even <laughs> turn around. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, you're, you know. How, by the way, had you played a whole lot? Of, have you played many Thanksgiving games? None. This None. Is my first one. So now it, people play on Thursday night now. Yeah. Have you played a lot of those? Yeah, Thursday night, yeah. So it's kind of, but it's not the it's same not, thing? It's not the same. Say why. Because <laughs> it's like the Thanksgiving game, I guess. They, that's when they um, bite the... Uh, the turkey leg. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's different. So the fact that it's Thanksgiving <laughs> is, a, yeah. is Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, well, what are you talking about? Like, I do. I my first you, one too. <laughs> you were probably thinking about being a kid <laughs> and watching John Madden break out the turducken. <laughs> right? That's what you were thinking of. Uh, I don't think they do that anymore. I think that left with John. Um, is it different because it's Thanksgiving? Yeah, it's different because it's Thanksgiving. Because... Normally, I mean, all my years, think we usually go in, go get up in the morning and practice, and then have Thanksgiving off. But got a game, so it's different. Are you still gonna be able to celebrate Thanksgiving like later in the day? Yeah, I'd be able to celebrate. Yeah. I don't eat like bad, oh. so oh. <laughs> um, I try to stay eating the same thing. But I'm gonna enjoy it after that for sure. <laughs> well, how do you how do you trick your body to get ready to play a game? On Thursday, most guys who have been in the league 12 years that I've known, uh, they don't start feeling human till Thursday. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough to get ready for Thursday night games because, you know, you put so much work in on Sunday and you're just starting to feel right on Thursday. But I take care of my body a lot. I probably double up that week a couple of times. And, um, what double up on what? Massages, cold tub, hot tub. I probably get – Probably game on Sunday. Probably get maybe three, four. Get a massage every day just to get ready for the game. Are you mentally prepared for that quick turnaround this Sunday playing the Panthers next Thursday? Yeah, I'll be prepared, but I, <laughs> I try to take it a uh, day at a time, yeah. a game at a time, and then you know uh, attack those those things when they come. So um, it's gonna be a challenge, but you know that's, that's why you play the game. Um, let's pull back the lens a little bit and take a longer view at the second half of the season, as I mentioned, when you came out of training camp before Trayvon and, and uh, Layton were injured. Uh, there, a lot of your teammates were talking about being an elite defense, whatever that means. It's hard to be as elite without elite players. Um, now you had a half year. Everybody knows each other. What's the potential for the defense in the second half of the year? I think we got a lot of potential. I think we're still growing. I think we're getting better each week. And um, just bent by us playing with each other and, and um, getting used to each other and getting used to how guys like to play in certain situations. I think we, you know, the sky's the limit. I just, just think we just got to keep working, you know. And the special teams that I, I've been on, you know, this time of the year through the, to the end of the season, this is when you start, you know, making your strides, start playing good football, you know, start getting and showing people what type of team you want to be. Second most in the NFL since 2020 with, I think, 62 interceptions. How many more interceptions do you feel like this defense can pick? A lot. A lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot. I think, um, we, you know, DQ appreciates every every week. You know, get the ball, get yeah. the ball, you know, and and uh, everybody's fighting over the ball. You know, we, we, we got we competitive. We trying to see who getting the most plays <laughs> and the most picks. So um, it's fun. Okay. Um, are you a talkative player on the field? I'm not um, because I think with my style of play, you got to kind of be um, focused. Um, some guys, I feel like over the years, talk because – you know, they had a different style of play. But with mine, I just think, you know, you make one mistake, you know, it can be it can be a touchdown. So I just try to focus on each play and, and reset each play. Now, Deron Bland hardly says anything to anyone, so <laughs> yeah. I can't 
<laughs> Trayvon, on the other hand, has been has been known certainly in training camp to be engaged in competitive conversation. <laughs> yeah. Have you? Did you see that in him in the first couple of games before he got hurt? Trey, he uh, he's quiet off the off the um, field, uh, but you know once he on the field, he he's fiery. I love it. You know he get me going, and um, you know yeah, I think he has that swag that that you need that corner, and he can back it up. You know he has great ball skills, and you know I love the way he play. I mean I knew he was great, um, you know being on other team, but actually seeing him every day in person, the plays he can make. Is this is special. I asked uh, Jake Ferguson this: What kind of spirit car that reminds him of himself? And he said a Honda Civic because it looks like nothing, but it really has a lot of like um, durability. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so, how would you describe yourself as a car? Um, Since you said you're not vocal on the field, I say. That's a tough one. That's, a, that's like um, a very, that's like a modernization I, of the old. If you were a tree, what yeah. kind of tree would you? Be? I say uh, I got a I got a I got a Lamborghini SUV. So that's okay. what I am. Uh, all right, there you are. There you I go. can't be the low one because I'm not I'm not that fast. But I'm bigger, but I'm faster. So. Okay. <laughs> so now we now we know you have great taste. Where where else do your tastes? run to uh, the luxurious i think um i like fishing um a lot and i have a place in florida that you know my me and my family go down and fish here and there and um that's pretty much it i like spending time with my family and uh kids in sports you know spending time with the wife and, and enjoying life yeah but i'm talking about the Equivalent of the Lamborghini. <laughs> I mean, like, do you have a big house, fishing maybe. boat? Uh, house? Nah, nah, nah. Just house. I got two homes. Okay. Um, one here, one in Florida. And um, that's pretty much it. Got a, I got nice clothes. Clothes, maybe. Okay. Um, now, uh, I don't have a boat. No boat? Too much maintenance. Oh, oh no big deal. Yeah. He's a smart man. How often do you get to visit your home in Florida? Say it again. How often do you get to visit your home in Florida? Anytime I have a break, I try to escape down there and um, go. It's like 30 minutes from Miami, mm -hmm. um, near the water. And, you know, kids in sports, so, you know, it's always nice down there. <laughs> so uh, you, can, you can do whatever you need to do down there. Yeah. J. Ron Curse, I found out a couple of years, if in his first year here, uh, considers himself the best-dressed Oh my God! Close horse on the team. I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, I get in the locker room before I, cause I get to the games, you know, before everybody, cause I got a whole routine I gotta, I gotta do. So, I, I'm waiting on J. Ron to walk in. <laughs> so, does he think he's the best dressed, or do, do you think he might actually be? Uh, I think I got him a couple of times, but I think consistently. He 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 does a good job. He will, but he wears some different stuff. Though. I was just gonna <laughs> yeah, say, J.K. Yeah. will he will push the envelope a little yeah. bit on what you would expect to see a a very tall, muscular man wear. Yeah. What have you seen him wear that you would not be caught dead in? <laughs> um, he's been fresh. He wore something one time that I was like. I can't do like the super big clothes yet because it's kind of coming back in style. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I have to look at some pictures because he got a he got a lot of different stuff. Do you have a favorite fashion designer? Uh, me. Or like designer brand. Mm, I like more like uh, I say like more vintage stuff. Okay. You know, not like designer, more like tea, vintage teas and stuff like that. So, um, not nothing crazy. I'm not like a big Gucci and all okay. that fan. So, <laughs> pretty unique style. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna talk about the personality in the defensive room because there are some interesting ones. You, you know, you've got such great experience 
And, and you, you're, you don't strike me as trying to overpower anyone with what you know, yeah. talking real loud. There are some other guys, especially some other guys in the secondary, who do kind of like you know when they're in the room. Yeah. Let me just put it that way. But you have, you have some real strong personalities on the defense, obviously. Uh, Demarcus Lawrence, obviously. Micah. Uh, not a lot of shrinking violets in there. Um, who, who would you say is the moral compass of the defense? Mm. That's a good question. Thank you. <laughs> we got a, uh, let's see. Like if I say to you, who, who, who owns that room? When the whole defense is in the room, who's in charge? I think, I think I'll say J.K., J.R.N., um, DeMarcus, um, and I think those two because I think when those guys talk, you know, everybody listen. You know, if they have something to say, if something's not going right, you know, those guys will step up and say something and, and, and get the room right. Interesting. All right, we're going to take our last break and uh, come back and uh, look ahead at the visit to the Carolina Panthers, and we're going to take uh, questions from our audience here at Sidecar Social uh, in the Star District in Frisco. This is the Cowboys Hour with our special guest, Stefan Gilmore. And it's big, it's good, and it's only for Cowboys fans. The Cowboys Special from the Cowboys and Papa John's. A large one-topping pizza for only $9.99 ordered today. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's, the official pizza of the Dallas Cowboys. Sorry, we'll be right back. <laughs> Miller Lite Cowboys Hour, supported by Albertsons. 
Welcome back. We're at Sidecar Social in the Star District in Frisco on the Cowboys Hour on Victory Monday. Woo! Brad Sham and Nicole Hutchison and our special guest, Stefan Gilmore, the Cowboys cornerback. I, I, uh, I noticed that you, uh, what year was it that you, had, you asked for a number change? Was it, were you in Buffalo or you changed? From my rookie year? I mean, Maybe you went from 27 to 24. Tw- yeah, my second year. I always wanted 24. Because? Because I thought um, some of the players that I looked up to wore 24, like Charles Woodson, um, Darrell Reeves, um, Champ Bailey. So I always wanted to wear 24 when I got to the league. But a veteran had 24, so I, I definitely couldn't wear it. So when he left, you know, I, I got 24. Now, how did you come to get 21? Did you ask for 21 here? Because I think of 21, 21 kind of opened up freely. And I think here, you know, they don't retire numbers. Right. And I think uh, 21 is a special number here. And I, a lot of great players done wore 21. And, you know, it, it, it just fit me well. What number did you have growing up playing football? Five. I was five? Like five, yeah. Okay, yeah. so five, 24. 21, 21 okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Are you trying to find a pattern? I was trying to, yeah, I was trying to do something, but it, it didn't work. Let's take some questions from the audience. Hey, what's up, good morning? Um, my name is Corey. Before I ask you a question, I just want to say I'm from South Carolina, too, so it's good to see somebody from South Carolina play for the Cowboys. Appreciate uh, you. No problem. So um, my question is, I know back at training camp, C.D. Lamb was talking about how smart he was as a defensive, uh, like the way he lined up, uh, you can know certain routes without giving it too much details. Um, well, how does that happen? Just, uh, just I guess a lot of film studying from you, or just certain uh, giveaways from? Yeah, I think um, uh, a lot of film study and a lot of just playing over the years. Just because offenses don't change, they may try to make it look different, but they all run the same stuff. And um, I just try to study a lot to to make the game so much easier for for me to be be great at it. And, um, you know, if you study, it's like in, taking a test. If you study super hard on it. You know, you're going to ace it, and I take that same mindset with film study. Corey, thanks. Obviously, C.D. Lamb's having a ridiculous yes. run right now. Oh, yeah. How have you seen him grow as a receiver from the time you walked in the door here? Yeah, I think I think C.D. has grown a lot. I think he want to be great. You know, he uh, – and the, just the way he practiced, that's one thing that stick out with me. He make those same plays in practice, so it's not no surprise – you know, when he does it in the game. So um, just seeing – and I think that's the that's the process of being great, you know, just doing it over and over each day and on Sundays. He's explosive, great route right, runner. Man. For you that gets to face him every day in practice, yeah. what's it like having to guard somebody like CeeDee Lamb? He's tough. He's, uh, he's tough to cover, mm. but um, – I get them right. <laughs> nah. But they could all they could all be covered, can't they, Steph? Come on. Have, nah, you, have you ever played have you ever played one that you said, I cannot cover this man? I'm gonna tell you someone that gave me trouble when I was young. I wish I would have covered him like in year four or five was uh Calvin Johnson. That's a big man. He's huge. He was six six, two forty five, strong, fast. You know, he was tough to cover. How would you have played him, even in year four? <laughs> I, would, I think I could have got him in year four. four, you, you four. But as a rookie, I covered him as a rookie. So he was oh. like in year seven or eight. So it, it was tough. But you probably, first time you lined up against him in the line of scrimmage, you had to stand there and look at him for <laughs> yeah. a minute. Then it's hot and he's gone. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Holy cow. Since we won't be back until after the Thanksgiving, I want to wish uh, all the players and the coaching staff happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Going back to uh, when you were growing up, what was Thanksgiving like, the traditions, and are those traditions still carrying on to your new family? Yeah, for sure. We all, we did the traditional, you know, um, grandmama, granddaddy cook, Thanksgiving dinner, um, had all, all the in-laws, I mean, all the grandkids in for dinner. Um, you know, just a traditional Thanksgiving. But now it's tough because, you know, I don't live back home. You know, I have to fly everybody here. I'm the oldest of six. So um, people, everyone is spread out. But, you know, we still try to FaceTime if we can't get together or they come, come to my house on, on Thanksgiving. So we still try to keep that same tradition. How, how many of the other five and uh, uh, extended family are going to be here next week? 
Uh, my mom and dad probably will. Um, my sister just had a twin, so she may not be here. And my little brother played for the Lions, so he ain't going to be here. <laughs> uh, no, he'll be, yeah, he'll be working. He'll be working. He'll be working. And um, my other two sisters live in Boston. They might can make it. Um, and they'll let me know. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Stefan. My name's Tony. Um, when you first got here, a lot of the defensive backs, when they were asked about you coming to the team, they gave you the utmost respect and how you were able to teach them yeah. things that they needed to know about the position. With that said, is there coaching in your career? <laughs> I think I could do it. Uh, I think um, I could teach guys. Uh, I mean, Izzy, um, Izzy to say – Izzy – I don't even know how to say his name. Is Izzy on our team? Izzy is. A, oh, uh, it's been agony. I don't oh. want to say his name wrong. That's like, my guy. Izzy. He's a gamecock, but he always tell me like, "Or oh, you need to coach. You're so smart. You know, you you teaching me every day." But I think I could do it. Um, it's just, you know, when that time comes, you know, I just have to make that decision to do it. Appreciate you. You know how many yeah. hours those guys work. I know that's the thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget when Drew Pearson finished playing and he had to quit playing a little early because he had an automobile accident and had a ruptured spleen. Yeah. So Tom Landry said, come, come be an assistant coach. And Drew said yes. And he did it for a year till he found out how many hours they worked and how little money they made. <laughs> yeah. He said, I'm no, this is not for Drew. Yeah. How about them cowboys? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So my question is, I'm Oscar Ramos. Uh, my question is, uh, how do you feel about wearing that great number 21? It feels great, you know. Um, like I said, one of the players that I looked up to was Dion. You know, he wore it. And just seeing, I even go on like Getty Images and look at him wearing it. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I try to wear my socks the same. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's a legendary number. And I, I try to wear it with, with um, pride and um you know i'm excited that I, I got to you know step into wearing this this legendary number um appreciate you. how uh thank you for the question appreciate that um how do you keep from looking at this stage of the year from looking ahead how do you really just focus on the next game me myself because it's so it's so you have to prove yourself you know every week and like I said before, I, I just take that mindset and, you know, I want to be great in that moment. You know, I don't want to wait because, you know, nothing's promised and you have to take care of business now to get to where you want to go. And um, if you don't do that, then, you know, you, you're not guaranteed the future. So you got to handle business right now. When did the notion of being in the Hall of Fame first really kind of grab a piece of your brain? Um, I think um, being in New England, um, talking to, like, one of my mentors, great friend of mine, Ty Law, mm. you know, he's in the Hall of Fame. Yes, just, he is. Just seeing, you know, Bill let me, you know, fly to Canton to see him get inducted. And, you know, I said I wanted to be that one day. And, and that, that was a big moment for, for myself, especially for him, just seeing him get inducted and, you know, I, I just told myself I want to be there one day. As a kid, you always envision growing up, I'm going to be successful. Do you ever envision uh, that moment in Canton, Ohio? Nah, not growing <laughs> up. <laughs> growing up, you just want to, you know, you're just having fun. Yeah. Um, making plays. And, you know, you don't really look at that moment until, like, like I said, New England, just seeing it in person. Mm -hmm. Seeing all the history, just seeing the, all the great players, you know, over the years, just 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 get honored for all the hard work they've done did and you, coaches. Did you go through the bus room? Yeah, I did. Seen a lot of those buses, and uh, you know, it's it was great. You know, it's uh, because without those guys, you know, it wouldn't be me. It wouldn't be um, the guys that's going to play the game in the future. You know, those guys paved the way. Well, um, frankly, I hope you get there because I, I think you had that kind of career. But I'm really glad the Cowboys said, you know what, we, we need Stefan Gilmore. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I hope it lasts a while. And thank you so much thank for being you. with thank us you. tonight. Thank you. Stefan Gilmore, everybody, happy Thanksgiving. And Nicole and I will see you a week from Monday when we come back to Sidecar Social.
on the Cowboys Hour. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?